the um, Amish historic room. They are now under two different owners, but they will be um, doing reciprocal eas easements for one another. The um, Hammerhead, located on both properties. Applicant Marketing Management Incorporated uh, and Stu Carew lives in the house, or is the applicant Stu Carew uh, slash, I don't, I don't, I'm confused, or is it uh, the three, including Sandra Sajak? I, I think, and I may have one of them reversed. I believe that the the lot that's on the top part of the of the plan in front of you was owned by Midman. It was owned by Mid Management, and the bottom lot is owned by Stuart Carew. And the top lot, Mid Management, the president of of marketing management is Stuart Carew. So it was the same person that owned both lots. Now the top lot has been sold. Mid Mid Marketing Management has sold it to the Sajax, and there's a letter in the application that confirms that the Sajax know about this and are, are approving this, this application. Does that help at all? If that's the case, it sure does, because I had it just the other way around. I might have back now. Yeah. Mr. Rutzman? I, I think that begs the question of why aren't the Sajax the applicant? It affects primarily their property? The Sajax, I don't believe the Sajax took ownership of the property till after this application was submitted for the board. So they, they closed the property while this application, why wouldn't they reapply? I understand we don't want to put them through additional costs, but I always have a problem when we get to these where we're approving improvements on rights and interests of other people who aren't here. We have a sign, you know, for instance, William Zajac um, hasn't signed anything. Is he also an owner of the lot referred to as, as the Sandra Zajac lot? He's a co-owner. I'm not sure he is a co-owner. I'd have to I'd have to recheck the assessing records. I discussed this with the applicant, mm. and typically. We'll, I, I made it very clear that they had to have an application form and had to have the name of the applicant on it and the name of the applicant had to own the property. Um, I told them that they could make a co-ownership, co-applicant application or they could have a letter written that the other people, the other people involved were aware of, of what was going on and approved it. So they have taken the second approach rather than the first. I guess the letter states that Sandra Sajak is the owner. I don't, I don't mean to make a big deal of this, but at the same time, I, I always have a problem when we would deal with the other people's interests. And this, you know, the, they appear to be cross easements. So they appear to be improvements that cross over both sites, and I just don't understand why both uh, aren't applicants. Or something a little more formal indicating um, that they join with this application formally. Questions, comments? Mr. Wilcox. Would I, would I be incorrect in presuming that if we do ask as a condition that the cross easement deeds be verified with the town attorney that at, at, at that point in time the correct owners would be indicated on those easement deeds? I would think they would have to. Any further discussion? A question of the applicant. Are there improvements now on um, what would be the most northerly site, the long pie-shaped piece? Are there currently improvements on there that have been made that, that go on to um, this other site, 9D? In other words, are there improvements already there? The improvements are already on 9A, which is this, right. this pie-shaped lot. Mm -hmm. This lot is now under construction. The building is under construction and the driveway hasn't been installed yet. Okay. 
Any other questions or discussion? <clears throat> Your motion? I have a motion, Mr. Parkhurst. <coughs> motion for the board to consider findings of fact. Stuart Carew, Marketing Management Inc., with the support of Sandra Sajak, is requesting a public access waiver for lot R2 9A, located at 413 Old Ocean House Road. Two, a public access waiver was granted for the lot by the Planning Board on July 17, 1991. Three, the applicant is proposing to relocate the turnaround onto lot R2. Dash 9D, which requires reciprocal rights of access for both lots. Four, the application substantially complies with the <coughs> public access waiver standards, section 19-4-2B. Therefore, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Stuart Carew Marketing Management Inc. for a public access waiver for lot R2-9A, located at 413 Old Ocean House Road, be approved with the following condition. One that a reciprocal access easement deed for lots R2-9A and R2-9D be submitted in a form acceptable to the town planning, a town planner and town attorney. I'd actually like to revise that condition to say that reciprocal access easement deeds for lots R2-9A and R2-9D be submitted in a, form, in a form acceptable to the town planner and town attorney. Thank you. <clears throat> Do I hear a second? Second. Mr. Wilcox? Second. Was a second. Any further discussion? Uh, just point of clarification. Okay. Mr. Emery? Um, it's the map indicates map R2 lot 9A, uh, and the memo refers to lot R2 9A. Do you want an answer? I believe it's 9A. <coughs> I didn't pick that up. Let me show you that right. Yeah. Now, it's the, I believe the lot in question is 9A, is the one we're looking for the public access waiver, and that's what's shown on the map. And I believe that's also what's referenced in the motion. Um, yes. But the reciprocal easement would have to be for both lots, 9A and 9D. Let me uh, ask another question, then, uh, if I might, again, point of clarification. Uh, I heard from the uh, testimony that uh, lot 9A has, was already constructed and uh, has been or is, uh, or I assume used to be owned by uh, Mr. Carew, and he built a house there. Yes. Uh, he's now building a house on 9D and has sold the house on 9A to um, the uh, Sajax. Uh, wouldn't it seem reasonable that the public access waiver would have ridden or, or gone with lot 9A and are therefore already be approved for 9A and that the public access waiver now has to be approved or readjusted for 9D or for both lots? Do you want me to answer that? Please. Okay. The original approval was for lot 9A, and this applicant has not constructed the site in accordance with the original approval. So what they're doing is they're coming back and asking for a new approval for a new design. 9D still does not need a public access waiver because, just to complicate this a little more, the house that's now on 9A used to be on 9D. <laughs> So 9D never needed a public access waiver because it was a built lot. 9A was not a built lot, and that's why it needed a public access waiver so it could get a building permit. Uh, is that within the shore? I don't want to. I don't want to <laughs> overcomplicate. Nine, 9A is in the shoreland zone, and when the board approved this in '91, a building envelope was shown, and the 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 structure that is on 9A right now is within the building envelope that was approved by the planning board, consistent with current shoreland zoning requirements. Was construction commenced on lot 9D within a year of the building being moved, or? Yes. Okay. It's currently under construction right now. I mean, if I'm confused at this moment in time, I would assume that if anyone has to review the record in two days, they will uh, I don't want to make this more difficult than it is, but I just would like to understand it. 
Mr. Emerson. Sure. I, question to the planner again. I, I, um, I guess because I recognize this, um, <coughs> I, I read through it assuming this was a revision or an amendment to an existing public access waiver when it indeed is not. Um, it's a new public access waiver. When the house on lot 9A was constructed or moved to that location, um, did it meet all other requirements and conditions of the original public access waiver? Yes. And in, in the, the only reason it's not an amendment to a public access waiver is our ordinance doesn't allow for amendments. You just get a brand new one. So this is I mean, it's, it's technically, I mean, it, technically it's a brand new one. It, in reality, it's in amending the turnaround portion of your original approval. Now, the original approval also talked about width of the road. You waived the 50-foot paving requirement from Old Ocean House Road. Um, you created a building envelope. All of that, the rest of the public access waiver on the, the original approval has been met. It's just this turnaround portion has not been met. So uh, right, I'm, I remember that I think the, the septic system or the leach field supposedly was in this original turnaround that's right. um, and had to be constructed a certain way. So that's where the septic system is still there and, and all of those. Things. I mean, it, it was, it, we sort of agonized over this and trying to make it fit. Um, uh, and, it, and it still doesn't sort of fit. So. Um, I, I, one more question, I, I think maybe I'm not trying to put Janet on the spot here, but if if these reciprocal access easement deeds are signed by the appropriate interest owners, those who have interest in the property, those who should sign these, would that imply that they concur Absolutely. to all of these? I, I think yeah. that's... I mean, that's what I'm concerned about covering. We don't have the applicants here as co-applicants, but a condition joins them through the easement deed, I think. Yes, I, I think if, I'd be if a landowner gave an, an easement deed in a form acceptable to the town attorney, the town attorney would require that all of the people who had interests in the land would join in that deed, and by granting that easement deed, I think it would be very clearly implied that the owner had been aware of this proceeding and had uh, approved of its I, to me, that I think satisfies yes. the, the right title and interest Thanks. issue that I had with it originally. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Thank you. Last item on the agenda under other business is the Fort Williams multi-purpose playing field requested by the Town Council for comments regarding a proposed playing field in Fort Williams, section 19-2-7. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Uh, Mr. Mr. Again, I find myself with a conflict of interest. The uh, firm with which I'm employed is uh, doing work at Fort Williams and employed by the Town of Cape Elizabeth. Uh, so I must recuse myself and with the Board's uh, uh, indulgence, I will recuse myself for the evening <coughs> to support your uh, uh, decision to uh, adjourn the meeting. <laughs> Mr. Chair, I think there may be business here that, that Mr. Emery <laughs> might have to stay around for. Other business, perhaps? <laughs> <laughs> ah, never mind. I'm just down the street, <laughs> you know, so if you... <coughs> Thank you and good night. Um, who is representing the applicant tonight? 
if we could, um, could we have a brief history of why we're here tonight as to what the process was that you had to go through to get to this point? And you make it as brief as you can. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, in response to your question, who was the town represented by? I'm Michael McGovern. I serve as the town manager. I'm joined by Janet McLaughlin, who is the town council chairman, and by Steve Harding, who's been the town's engineer on this project uh, with those associates. Uh, as you, I think most of the planning board members are aware, uh, this project or a variation of it has been uh, in discussion for approximately two years. Uh, it, it initially started with a group of citizens who had approached the Fort Williams Advisory Commission about possibly putting a Little League field and then a uh, soccer lacrosse playing field at Fort Williams Park. Uh, that evolved into what was eventually a, a proposal last year that came before you and also went before the Fort Williams Advisory Commission and then before the Town Council that proposed a athletic complex at Lions Field consisting of a soccer, lacrosse, playing field, field hockey, playing field, can't leave out field hockey, I'll be in big, big trouble, uh, and uh, at Fort Williams, a soccer, lacrosse, field hockey, uh, and baseball field. Uh, that subsequently came to, as I mentioned, this board, the Fort Williams Commission, with certain conditions. Uh, it went to the town council. The town council considered the proposal. It was defeated on a three to three vote, uh, tie vote failing. Uh, the issue uh, then went back to a council uh, subcommittee uh, consisting of two members of the council. Uh, they looked at a, uh, a host of potential areas for different fields within the community. Uh, there was also a study done of looking at all the different requests for fields in the community, uh, looking at some of the different schedules. Uh, ultimately, that group, uh, that council committee reported back to the full council. Uh, the council engaged the firm of OST Engineering to look specifically at some of the areas that the uh, council group had come up with and to develop some cost estimates and more realistic uh, plans for the layout. Uh, that report from OST Associates came before the town council. Uh, at an initial meeting, they then conducted a workshop uh, that was a facilitated workshop uh, at which uh, they looked at all the different alternatives weighed one alternative over another alternative, and eventually uh, came forward with a consensus that this should be the plan that we should further look into and, and further pursue. Uh, the current plan calls for placing a Little League field at Lions Field, a second Little League field over the one that's already there, with the potential that one could also be put there in the future, uh, westerly of, of the proposed new field. In addition, at Fort Williams Park, uh, the project was downscaled somewhat to eliminate the Little League field and also to, to take the layout of the soccer lacrosse field and turn it 90 degrees as, as I went over with your workshop and as this plan shows. Uh, that's the history of it. Uh, the town council will be holding a public hearing. Uh, their plan is on September 9th and will be evaluating uh, your uh, re recommendations upon this, uh, the recommendations from the Fort Williams Advisory Commission, and also those that are at a public hearing will, that will occur that night. I also do want to mention that at the workshop that you conducted on this, uh, there was a comment made about it subsequently going through site plan review. I indicated that at that time, at that evening, that a reading of the ordinance indicated that that was not necessary. Uh, subsequently, uh, we did, uh, that was reviewed further, and there is a letter from the town attorney uh, dating back approximately a year that specifically does indicate that it does need site plan approval. So should this, uh, when this goes back to the council in September, uh, whatever action they take, if they do wish to continue to pursue the project, uh, the town council would then conceivably authorize uh, the engineering firm to continue to do the plans and then we would be back to the planning board uh, for site plan approval. And possibly also the stormwater uh, permit as well. Thank you. <clears throat> <clears throat> Any discussion or questions?
Russell. Mr. Chair, um, we have, we have <coughs> what we had as a board had proposed or, or summarized by a planner in front of us. I think um, I think when we came up with those items, um, the, the tone was that, that they wouldn't come back for site plan review and not that these items lose impact because of coming back here. But uh, um, I think there are a lot of issues that, uh, if indeed it has to come back to the planning board, um, we'll have a chance um, to review anyway. I think the only thing that, that I, uh, I had mentioned, and I just uh, want to make sure that, um, and, and it really is an issue if it comes back to the planning board, it'll be handled at that time, but it just, um, that there's emergency vehicle access to the field and um, as looking around the perimeter, um, I realize there's not a great deal of sloping there, but there's uh, four to five feet of ditching or or, or uh, slope, and um, you know I think we should be exceptionally uh, sensitive to being able to get a vehicle on the on the field without chance of getting mired in a drainage ditch or um, whatever. It's just a uh, simple gravel approach to that uh, for emergency reasons is, is important. We had that. Uh, at the, at the school site, and it'll switch back, but otherwise, I think we captured all those comments. Any, <clears throat> any further comments? No? I'm not sure if this is the appropriate time to do this, <clears throat> but I feel as though it needs to be brought up at some point in time. And I'm having a hard time, I guess, understanding <clears throat> why the taxpayers of the town of Cape Elizabeth are being asked to spend an extra $150,000 to build a ball field at Lions Field when one could be built at the same site in Fort Williams um, for that much less. And I'm not sure if the townspeople are aware of that, and I just I feel it needs to be brought up because I think it's going to be an issue that needs to be discussed. And it's going to have to be defended. Um, I, for one, just don't understand it. Um, I understand the situation we're in. We're supposed to be <clears throat> sending on a, a memorandum to the town council for a vote, but I just felt that that needed to be mentioned. And I guess I'll leave it at that. Mr. Chair, I, I think there are two things. Number one, you, I guess by board consensus, we could always um, add um, a recommendation for um, the council to to consider the economic feasibility of, of two locations in light of taxpayer concerns. Um, or number two, in, in all essence, it, that's a, a council decision. I think, uh, I think that the council makes that decision to pass it back as applicants. Um, it's a, I won't say political, but I'll say political decision um, to, to do one um, um, plan or another. And, and that's where that decision is made. I understand. <clears throat> I, I concur with you, so I, and, but and I don't know that it's the, the role of the, um, the planning board to recommend economic uh, feasibility issues back to the town, but. I'm not sure if it is either, but I, I just couldn't be quiet about it. <laughs> I know you couldn't. It's very simple. <laughs> well, just for the record, I, I, I understand the, the issue, but I happen not to agree with the uh, with the concern in terms of the uh, result, and I guess I'd like to suggest that we, as the planning board, stick to the items that are normally within our purview when we comment on this um, in particular, because I have every confidence that the issue will be fully explored at the town council level in terms of the economics. Okay, any further discussion <clears throat> or questions? Not I have a motion, please. I'm not reading any more motions. <laughs> Mess them up. 
Mr. Chair. Yeah. Mr. Walcott. Such a long one. I have a motion for the board to consider. Be it ordered that the comments of the planning board regarding the Fort Williams multipurpose playing field be forwarded to the town council. As amended. As amended. Do I have a second? Second. Just to be clear about what the amendment is, is the amendment number six that approaches to the fields for access emergency, for emergency vehicles should be assured? Mm -hmm. Okay. And we don't need to mention anything about site plan review that's been covered previously, Correct. I believe. Yeah. Any further discussion? All those in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. We hear a motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Thank you. Thank you. It's pretty good. First article took an hour. Yeah, it's all in that. It was all in that. That is not bad, considering what was on that agenda. Okay, you just couldn't move that thing along. Where, I didn't see that motion. Where was that motion? The motion that I was reading, was there some trick to that? Yeah. Was, it, was there a repeated phrase no, in there or something? Yeah, I think you should. It's submitted, and then it said submitted again.